Okay guys, so we're back uh, with the third episode of Programming 101. So, the first thing we're going to do is, gonna, uh, these are all our comments. This is the comment. So we're going to actually describe what the next line does. So next line, print, uh, not print, I'm a really bad typer, print, Okay, and we're going to get rid of these lines here. So I've mentioned this hello world program. Okay, what is hello world? Well, essentially, one of the first computers, apparently, when they ran it, the first thing they done with it was made it print hello world to the screen. Therefore, now, whenever you learn a new language or some kind of new code or anything like that, or if you're testing your IDE to get it working, to make sure that your compiler's working and everything like that, the first thing you nearly always do is make a print hello world to the screen. Hello world. That's one of the first things you always do with the program. So this line here, system.out.println, just know this line, okay? We'll actually get into you know, system.out.println, what each term there means, blah de blah de blah in the future. Okay? So we're actually going to uh, leave the hello world. And now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about variables. Okay, now, what is a variable? Well, essentially, a variable is a, a piece of memory. Now, there's different data types. We're just going to do primitive data types for now. But what is, you know, it's a, it's, it's a chunk of memory. In your computer, you know you have RAM, okay? Well, when you have a variable, you're essentially saying, take a little piece of that, mem that RAM and store this information in it. Okay? So we're going to create our first variable of type int. Now, int is shortened for integer, as you may know, as you may have guessed. And an integer, if you don't know, is a number, is a number without a decimal point. In other words, it's any whole number, whatever. So we're going to say int. Okay? And we're going to say my number, and we'll go over some Java conventions, and you can call this number whatever you like. We're going to say five. Okay, so int my number is equal to five. Now, if we hover over this, and yeah, look, see, there may split declaration, and blah 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 blah. Just ignore that. Okay, so int my number is equal to five. So what have we done here? Well, what we've done with this code is when we run this in the computer, when we run this, what it's going to do is it's going to take a little piece of memory, okay, of type and, and call it my number, and we're going to store the number five in that, okay? Now that five is not being stored as text, that's been stored as a number. The two are very different. This here is storing is a text in quotation marks, we'll get to them, they're called strings. And this is a number. So what we've done is we've created what's called a variable. Now a variable is essentially a piece of memory that we can write over to. We are essentially writing the number five into memory or into our RAM. And you have to declare a type called int. So that's an int. Now I'm gonna go and get a list of uh, data types for Java. Okay, so these are your primitive data types these are known as. And they are the byte, the short, the int, the long, the float, the double, and the charm boolean. You're going to live and breathe these. So we'll go through what each one is. A byte is essentially 8 bits. And this will store a number. A short. Uh, well, a byte doesn't really store a number. A byte just stores 8 bits of information. It's a bit of a weird thing. You, you won't use this too often. Okay, we won't be using it for a long time. A short is essentially a short number. By short, I mean it goes from minus 32,768 to 32,700. That's, you can put those in there. Byte, you can put in from minus 128 to 127. An integer, don't forget, these are only storing single numbers, okay, or not single numbers, like uh, non-decimal point numbers, okay? This is uh, the Java tutorials. If you want to look over more of the stuff, there's some good stuff here. 
Um, that's what an int has. So it's going up to like 2 billion. And then a long is freaking massive. <laughs> you can get away with a lot of stuff with long. Okay. Now, a float, if you're wondering, a float is essentially a floating point number. So a floating point number allows you to store decimal points. Okay, now, the, now where the decimal point is varies on how much data can be stored, but that's a decimal point with a store of float. Okay? A double is essentially a double, double float, and it can store a bigger number with a decimal point, essentially. Now, a boolean is one bit of information, and it can only store true or false. That's it. You can tell it to store true or false. Done. A char will store one character. A, B, C, D, whatever you need. Char will only store one character. So there are the different data types. And that's essentially what you're doing is you're saying set aside the amount of memory that an int will store. It always sets aside the same amount of memory. So set aside that amount of memory, call it my number, and let it equal to five. Now, for this here, there are a list of words that you cannot use. For example, you, I can't call int byte equals five because the compiler, because this is what's called a reserved word. And you can't write these words in anywhere in your code. Other ones are like public, class. If the text turns blue in NetBeans, it means it's a done. Void, static, um, implements, uh, true and false are other words. See, so you can't put anything that's a a data type, not or a a reserved word. Now there's a list, I think, of twenty four of them there is, but you can't call anything like that. Now, as for naming conventions, uh, classes are always you know are typed with capital letters for each word, no spaces. You can't have spaces here. If I put a space here, code breaks. If I run this, and I run because all this will break it, but that'll cause the code to break. Okay. For variables, I generally and methods, I generally you know, write them small letter and then a big letter for each word after it. If you want, I can make this a small letter and put an underscore. So allowed characters are things like underscores. You can put in dollar symbols if you need to. If anyone does PHP and knows PHP code, you'll know what the dollar symbol is very important. But that's essentially what that is. So we're going to get rid of all these. We don't need them for now. So what we, what we did there was we stored the number 5 in, my, in, in a section of memory of size int called my number. So we're just going to copy and paste this. Control V. And we're actually going to kind of copy and paste this in here. Remember, don't put it in quotation marks. So what this is going to do is this is going to take our method here and print it out to the screen. So let's run this. Remember each line has to end in a semicolon. Hello world 5. Now what this println means just means print new line. But as you can see it's put the number 5 in our thing. It's very nice isn't it? So that's this uh, video guys. That's basic primitive data types. The next one we're going to go look through operators.